Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Habatu fillah continuing on in our study of Imam Anawawi's book of Riyadh Salihin Kitab Hamidullah Ta'ala wa shukrihi Bab wujub wa shukr We reach the hadith <coughs> We reach the hadith the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Imam Anawawi mentioned in this chapter he said wa anhu an rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qaal kullu amrin the bal la yabda'u fihi bil hamdulillah fa huwa aqta hadith hasan ruahu abu dawood wa ghayri this is the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu who reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, any matter of importance which is not begun with alhamdulillah remains defective. In this hadith, although this hadith, its isnad is uh, weak, but the meaning is uh, sound and the ulama of Islam have use this in their books and in their lectures and in their khutbahs because this was from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So from this hadith, some of the benefits that the ulama mentioned is that the uh, recommendation for a person to praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Almighty, whenever they're going to uh, do something, and especially of any important matter. And of course, this relates, this has to do with worship. This does not mean that we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we do a, a, an action of sinfulness. So, for example, in real situations that I recall from hearing from people being related to me, that, for example, people having met people who drink alcohol, for example, he's drunk. And he is saying Bismillah before he drinks the alcohol. Or he is being very severe in drinking with the right hand, which is from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And doing so, drinking uh, alcohol, things that are prohibited. So we have to be cautious of falling into playing with the religion. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgive us of our many faults and shortcomings. Another benefit of this hadith is the baraka tanzalu bi dhikri ismillahi ta'ala wa hamiduhu wa hadha min fawa'id alhamd wa minhu ya'lamu al-abd anna kullu shay'in yunsiba ila Allahi ta'ala fuhu mubarak wa kullu shay' maktu' an illahi ta'ala fuhu mamhuk al-baraka so the second benefit that uh, the ulama, they mention with regards to this hadith and the benefits that can be derived from this hadith and the importance of, uh, of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as this hadith emphasizes that, of course, and that's why Imam Anoah, we mention it in this chapter, is that the blessings that are, uh, <clears throat> that descend or the blessings which a person will receive from remembering Allah, the Almighty, and praising Him. And so those are from some of the benefits of Alhamd, of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and likewise from this is that the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should associate everything which is praiseworthy to Allah azza wa jal. And anything that is uh, which is associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his divine sifat is mubarak. It's blessed. And anything which is free from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from baraka, is free from blessing. So if you do activities, especially activities, that we're not talking about the mubah, uh, those things which are mubah, or those things which are, uh, you know, not related to ibadah. 
but we're talking about in, in general those things which you do which they have no uh, no you you forget to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in them and and if they have any relationship to ibadah then of course they are free from baraka so the point is is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala then Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned uh, the next hadith in this bab wa nabi Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal إِذَا مَاتَ الْوَلَدُ الْعَبْدِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى لِلْمَلَائِكَتِهِ قَبَضْتُمْ وَلَدَ الْعَبْدِ فَيُقُولُونَ نَعْمْ فَيُقُولُ قَبَضْتُمْ ثَمْرَةَ الْفَوَائِدِهِ فَوَائِدِهِ فَيُقُولُونَ نَعْمْ فَيُقُولُ مَاذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدِ فَيُقُولُونَ حَمِدَكَ وأسترجع وأسترجع فيقول فيقول الله تعالى أبن لعبدي بيت في الجنة وسم وسموه بيت الحمد رواه ترمذي وقال حديث حسن. In this hadith that is also collected in Tirmidhi was narrated by Imam Tirmidhi and he said it was Hasan. Is the hadith of Abi Musa al Ashari رضي الله تعالى عنه. who reported the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when a slave child dies, when a slave's child dies, Allah the Most High asks the angels, have you taken out the life of the child of my slave? They reply in the affirmative. He then asks, have you taken the fruit of his heart? They reply in the affirmative. Thereupon, thereupon he asks, meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala asks, what has my slave said? They say he has praised you and said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah and to him we shall be returned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Build a house for my slave in Jannah and name it Bayt al Hamd, the Bayt, the house of, uh, of praise. And this was collected in Tirmidhi. In this hadith, Ahabatifillah, are many, many, many benefits. And it shows us the importance of being patient during trials and tribulations. And that one of the most severe trials that a person can, have, can, can endure is losing their child. Because... As is well known, our children and our parents are beloved to us. And losing them to sickness, to disease, to an accident, or deliberately, all of these things will cause a severe pain upon a person's heart. And this hadith shows us the characteristics of the mu'min, the one who is patient upon the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from amongst the benefits of this hadith that the ulama mention, بَيَانْ جَزَا مَنْ يَحْمِدُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى فِي الدَّرَّةِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُعَوِّدُهُ بِبَيْتِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ هُوَ بَيْتَ الْحَمْدِ So one of the benefits that the ulama mention is that this hadith illustrates for us the reward for the person who praises Allah the Almighty during difficulty and that Allah will change those difficult circumstances and replace it with a house in paradise for this person and this house is called the house of praise another benefit of this hadith it shows us halal mu'min al muwafiq lazum al sabr wa ihtisab al ajr inda al masaib wa an yahmid Allah ala kulli hal wa yastarja bi qawlihi inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un 
uh, this hadith also shows us the state of the believer that is uh, has the tawfiq, has the blessing uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be adherent truly to patience. And that this person will will gain immense reward. And that they are patient during trials and tribulations. And that this characteristic is a characteristic in which this person praises Allah, the Almighty, under all circumstances, and they return to Allah by saying, or they illustrate this praise by saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That verily from Allah we came and to Him we shall return. So this shows us the importance of this dua and the importance of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under all circumstances. This also shows us, as another last benefit the ulama mentioned, that by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during difficulties, that this also reduces the trial and the tribulation that has befallen a person and will help them come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and, and forgive our many sins.